and servers how we doing coachella might be fucking canceled so not good amazing this is gonna be a part two to my last video so if you didn't watch that one i would suggest watching it i guess it doesn't really matter since we're in miami now the end of that last video kind of strings along and i'm just gonna kind of get right into it like i said on the last video this one's gonna be kind of long i think because it takes me forever to tell a story i'm sorry y'all so if you want to pause this video go make some popcorn get a snack i would do that it's mostly just me talking about this experience it was horrible um <laughs> But first, before I get into it, let's have a word with future Sarah. Take it away, bitch. Thank you so much, past Sarah. Keep doing your thing. Thank you so much, Function of Beauty, for sponsoring this video today. So hair care, just like skin care, different formulas work for different people. We all got our different issues going on, okay? Which is why Function of Beauty creates 100% customizable shampoos and conditioners for your unique hair. With Function of Beauty, it was so easy for me. All I had to do was go on their website and fill out a two minute quiz. The quiz asks you what your hair type is, your personal hair goals, and your preferred preferences. Like for me, I picked dandruff, dry skin, and you also get to choose the color of your bottle, the fragrance that you want it to be, and what you want to name your bottle. For example, sorry, I already used a lot of these. I actually use these for the trip that you're about to watch. I picked pink, green, and this cool, like, neutral color. I thought it kind of looked like milk. I named my product Function of Bitches. This is the function for bitches. You know what I'm saying? I chose, like, the warm vanilla sugary scents. And my hair is so silky and smooth. I'm not getting flaky anymore. My hair feels hydrated. I also use the leave-in treatment and I use this instead of the conditioner sometimes or I put this on after the conditioner. And the leave-in treatments are 100% customizable too and they can be added on to any order. There's no parabens, no sulfates, no GMOs, and no toxins. It's 100% vegan and cruelty-free. So that's amazing. If you click the link in my description, you can get 20% off your first order. So go check it out. Thank you again again function of beauty for sponsoring this and now back to future sarah i mean past sarah i'm future sarah back to you past sarah thanks girl that was some great info first before we get into the video sorry i'm back i'm really sorry if this video comes across as me being ungrateful or me complaining the whole time everything just kind of went wrong and it was so out of our control caitlin and i also wanted to go to miami so we can get some cool content for you guys we were just so upset that we couldn't get a really really cool crazy video all this shit went down instead so yeah i love you guys you're the reason why we even get to do cool stuff Enjoy the video. I left last video with dancing with some fans in a bar <laughs> um, with Billy Ray Cyrus. Like two weeks before the Cancun trip, Caitlin had this very spontaneous idea to go straight to Miami right after Cancun to the Super Bowl festivities. Not the actual Super Bowl, because that's like $5,000. We wanted to be in the same space as all the Super Bowl fun and just go to all the parties and shit. Then we found out after we booked our flights to Miami that Harry Styles was coincidentally gonna be there performing a Pepsi pre-show the night before his birthday. After we bought tickets for that, this was before Cancun. Two days later, Caitlin sends me a very overwhelming text message that says that Pitbull will also be performing in Miami. I've never seen Pitbull before. I am a stan. I was like, oh my God, Caitlin, we gotta fucking go to that. But that was gonna be at Shaquille O'Neal's party. It was called Shaq's Fun House. It was supposed to be like this big circus carnival thing. So we looked at the tickets. Tickets were like also $2,000. We're not gonna do that. We randomly got sponsored by Shaq's Fun House. They put us on a guest list. So we were just so overwhelmed. But then we realized the Shaq's Fun House, aka the Pitbull Show, is on the same night as the Harry Show. But there's no set list yet for Pitbull's time, so we're like, we'll figure that out when we get to Miami. We get to the airport after Cancun, cruising through the air. My ear is still plugged up. If you guys didn't watch that last video, it was just plugged up. I just couldn't hear out of it. So I was like, whatever, it'll be fine. It was not fine. The airplane starts to descend into Miami. The pressure got really bad, obviously, because we're descending, and my ears 
starts freaking the fuck out. I'm sitting in between these two men. I get really claustrophobic. I'm just like, oh my God, why is my ear ringing so loud? <laughs> It's cool. It was like a loud pop. It felt like a whole bushfire in my whole ear. It was like so red, throbbing. Like I said, I'm not a weenie, but this shit, it was the worst pain ever. And I talked about in my last video how it hurt really bad at the club and that was like the worst pain ever. Nah. Honey, I had no idea. So I'm literally like trying not to scream in this fucking airplane. It was so bad, I had to put my hand over my mouth, trying not to scream, and I'm rocking back and forth. I tapped both dudes on the shoulder, asking if they had Advil. No, no one had Advil. Advil. I raised my hand for the flight attendant, but she was all the way down there preparing for landing. She didn't see me. Then I just started sobbing because the pain was just unbearable. The guy on the other side of the aisle in my same row leans over, he like is trying to get my attention, and he hands me a piece of gum because he thinks that my ear just needs to pop. And I was like, thanks dude, I'll take whatever I can get. Finally, once we got onto the ground, it was bearable at this point, so it was fine. I'm like, I need to see a doctor. I don't know what's going on. Caitlin freaked me the hell out. She was like, oh my God, dude, your eardrum ruptured. That's happened to me on a plane before. Like, don't worry, just go to an urgent care. They'll give you some antibiotics. I'm like, my fucking eardrum ruptured? Why? And this was the night before the Harry show, and I'm like, what the fuck else could go wrong? Why is God punishing me? I am starting to pray again every night. I'm talking to God more. I'm just like, bruh, you know? It's Harry's fucking birthday, and I'm seeing Pitbull! Anyway, I go to this urgent care. The nurse takes me back, so this bitch... <laughs> I mean lady, she was really nice. I really actually did love her. This really nice lady nurse, she goes and gets a drain, sticks it in my ear, and bruh, it, oh! I screamed. It was to the point where she was like, do you need to hold my hand? And I'm like, yeah. She drains out my ear. There's like a bucket underneath me, and I just hear so much shit fall into it, and I'm like, what is that? She shows me what's in the bucket, and it was, oh my god. It was like a pound of sand, obviously not a pound, but just a lot of sand mixed in with earwax. So gross, even she was like, wow, I've never seen that much sand and earwax build up. What the fuck did you do? And I was like, bitch, I don't know. I was just in Cancun and I laid out on the beach for like one hour. Total. The doctor prescribed me some antibiotics. These antibiotics you can drink on. And I'm like, okay, great. Thank you so much, doctor. Fast forward to the next day. This is the day of Harry's show. So then Shaq tweets the set list for his fun house, right? And Pitbull comes on stage at 12.30, so midnight 30. Harry's show starts at eight, but we know that Harry has two opening acts. So we're like, realistically, Harry's gonna come on at 10. We're gonna spend two hours with him. We'll leave at midnight and we'll drive to Shaquille O'Neal's party. We'll make it in time for Pitbull, right? Perfect. And the party goes on till three in the morning. Also, Shaq's party was only five minutes away from the venue that Harry was gonna perform at. So it would take us five men. What the fuck could go wrong? I'm stressed about my outfit because I want to look cute. So I go shopping that day with Caitlyn and I pick out such an expensive shirt. I almost threw up when I paid for it, but it was still really cool. I felt like Bruno Mars in it. And then we go home, we're getting ready and bitch, I'm wearing heels. And I never, I never, and tights. Never wear tights or a skirt. That's how much I love Harry and Pitbull. Fucking look at this bitch. You look incredible. We Uber to the venue. And the venue is on this island, I guess. It's called Jungle Island. There's a bridge that connects to it, obviously. Like, obviously we didn't take boats out to the island. Like, there is a fucking bridge that you can drive across. When I typed in Jungle Island on Google, the first thing I saw were flamingos. I'm like, oh, yep, we're going to Aurora. When this show first got announced, we thought we were gonna be shuttled on a boat to an <laughs> island. We were like, oh, it's gonna be in the middle of the jungle. That sounds about right. I was like, oh yeah, he rented out the whole island. That's what I was picturing in my head. It's the Pepsi budget, like, they're gonna do something they huge. got flamingos we get there at like 8 30 or 9 because we really wanted to see lizzo because lizzo was opening and we noticed that it's like the venue was just kind of like a big ass tent that they just kind of blew up and we were like okay this is weird but like whatever so we walk in immediately like a couple girls come up to us 
and we're like taking pictures with them. Me and Caitlin were like, we need a drink, let's go to the bar. And the two girls that were with us, they were like, oh my God, go to this bartender. She's really, really nice. She's been serving us all night. They make me a drink, a double vodka crayon, cause I'm basic. I actually got two of them, <laughs> cause I was like dead sober and I was like, I need to get lit. But they were really small, $20 for the two. It was cool, I had my vodka crayons. We're still talking to fans. <laughs> that rhymes and then the lights go off and everyone's like ah! and then Lizzo comes out and then Caitlyn was like oh my god I need a drink I need a drink so I was gonna say Lizzo went to the bar Caitlyn went to the bar but she went to a different bartender on the other side Caitlyn was like hi can I have a double vodka crayon she's basic too they give it to her the bartender was like okay forty dollars please and Caitlin was like, excuse me, $40 for one double vodka grant? Why the fuck are you charging me $40 for one drink? That's absurd. I'm not paying this. And the bartender was like, sorry, like we don't make the rules. Like that's just how much it is. And Caitlin was just like, I'm not paying for that. And so I like walk up to the bartender and I was like, excuse me, hi. I don't understand how it's $40 because the two drinks that I got were $20 and I got two of them. The fucking bartender was like, who served you those? That was supposed to be $80. $80?! For two double vodka crayons? You're on crack. You're on crack! And I didn't want to like rat those girls out that served me the drinks because I think that they were just being nice to me because they knew how absurd the prices were. So I was just like, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. But I don't think Caitlyn like knew that that was what the vibe was. So Caitlyn was like, those girls down there, those girls gave her the drink. And I was like, Caitlyn. And then the bartender was like, oh really? Okay. Thanks for letting me know. But yeah, it's gonna be $40 for that one drink. We don't make the prices. And Caitlin was just so fucking mad. And I get it, I get it. So she was just like, fuck, whatever. And she was like kind of in a bad mood. And I was thinking like, damn it. Caitlin, please don't be in a bad mood. I don't wanna handle that right now. But like, I get it, I get it. That's fucking absurd. I was mad for her too. I can just tell that there's like a dark cloud over Caitlin. Like she's just not happy. Me and the two girlies are like trying to make her laugh but she was just not down she was not having it but in my head I was like once Harry comes out she'll be fine or even like us just walking over to Lizzo like Lizzo will lighten up the mood like we're gonna be dancing and shit we walk into the crowd and we're in the back Lizzo's out she's fucking killing it we're all like dancing I'm dancing with the girlies Caitlyn's still kind of pissed I was kind of like Caitlyn come on like dance with us and so then she was just kind of like okay fuck it like I'm not gonna sit in this bad mood at least we're gonna go to Shaq's and get lit because we had unlimited bottle service at Shaq's. We're all like dancing to Lizzo. Lizzo's twerking her ass. She like brings out the flute. It was iconic. And then this bitch gets off at, I want to say 1030. Correct. Lizzo's off the stage. Now they're just like playing random music. And so we're all just like dancing and shit, waiting for Harry. And it's 1030 now. I'm like, okay, Harry's gonna come on at 11. We'll have an hour with him. 11 comes around and no Harry. And we're like, okay, that's cool. Maybe he'll come on in like five minutes. Nope. Everyone's still dancing, but everyone's kind of like, what the fuck? And then I'm like, okay, he'll come on at 1130, right? Then we'll have 30 minutes with him. 11.30 comes around. <laughs> no sign of Harry at all. Um, nothing. No one's telling us anything. A light bulb went off in my head and I'm like, Duh, hello? He's coming out on his birthday. No shit, he's coming out at midnight. Why didn't I think of this? We're all stupid collectively, like, Duh. So then me and Caitlin are like trying to brainstorm and we're like, okay, so if he comes out at 12 and Pipple comes on at 12, 20, we're gonna only have like 10 minutes with Harry, which is tragic. It sucks, but we're gonna see Harry two other times this year. I don't know when the next time I'll see Pitbull in the 305. Me and Caitlin both were like, we love Harold from the bottom of our hearts, but we have to make it to Pitbull. So let's leave at 12, 10, okay? So at this point, it's 11.50, and everyone in the crowd is kind of realizing like, oh my God, he's gonna come out on his birthday. Like, no shit, no shit, like, duh. We were all gonna sing happy birthday to him right when it hit midnight. Now it's 11.59. Everyone is just so anxious. Everyone's like, ah! Like, you can hear everyone just like, oh my God, oh my God, it's almost midnight, it's almost his birthday. Like, we were like so excited. Me and Caitlin were like about to cry. Everyone started counting down like 10, nine, eight, seven, 
And then right at midnight, bitch, everyone all together. Happy birthday to you. All the lights turned on. Oh. But this evening's performance cannot go on. Sarah, it's, it's being canceled. We have to go. We have to go. Please go calmly and please stay safe. What? This is coming from the the Miami Fire Department. All of a sudden, bitches start running. Bitches are screaming, crying. This just happened. My anxiety took me to like a crazy realm by the way everyone was like stampeding and tripping over each other. Are we gonna fucking drown? Is it a flood? Like what the fuck? Are we going to die? And then we got security guards everywhere screaming in our face. Just when we asked a question, all the Pepsi security guards were so mean. They let us stay inside for like five minutes. And then after that, they're like, everyone get out. They were pushing everyone out. So it's just like a mass group of people just trying to all squeeze through this one door. So everyone is just like tripping on each other. It was a nightmare. Me and Caitlin are freaking out because at this point, it's like 12.10. Pitbull is on in 20 minutes. And also, we really, really wanted to go to Shaq's Fun House because it was gonna be a Kobe Bryant tribute. The whole party was all gonna be about Kobe because he passed away like a few days before that. It was gonna be such a beautiful thing too. Like we weren't just going for Pitbull, like we really wanted to be there for the Kobe tribute. We're both like on our Uber apps, trying to get an Uber, and every time we would try to get an Uber, it would say it's 20 minutes minutes away so we were like oh my god okay since everyone was trying to get an uber there were no ubers available and also no uber wanted to come out to the island because it was literally flooding so everyone's uber was canceling there's no way bruh there's literally no way do that I'm calling a lift. We went through three different Ubers. All of them canceled on us. At this point, it's 12:20. Pipples on stage. We're like, fuck, man. And we can't even get an Uber. Caitlin's like about to cry, and I'm like, if we miss Pipple, like we can see Pipple again. But like, at least we get to just go to Shaq's party. It's gonna be on and pop until 3 a.m. Okay, like we'll get there. We will get there. We're all outside at this point. Really, really hard, intense rain that was just downpouring. So my fucking really expensive shirt is now ruined. We're all just in the middle of the street, just like in a pool. It literally felt like we were all in a little pond outside. We tried calling taxis. No taxis were available. Is this how I die at a Harry Styles concert? Honestly, kind of iconic, but I don't want to die yet. We were like walking down the street trying to get service and there's people literally clung to the fence. People are standing on traffic cones. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my god! Are y'all good? Oh my god! No? He was like, are we gonna live or what? Oh my god! What? It was so weird. These two fans come up to us and they were like, oh my god, Caitlin and Sarah, do you guys need a ride? And we were like, yeah? Do you have a ride? Because it was so rare that bitches had rides. They were like, oh my God, yeah, my mom is here. She's picking us up right now. Me and Caitlin look at each other. We're like, oh my God, yes, we need a ride, holy shit. And then they were like, oh my God, no problem. Like my mom can take you, drop you off wherever you need to go. And me and Caitlin were like, yes, you guys are our fucking saviors. So we follow these two girls, we're trucking, through this fucking river and I'm in heels. The one time I wanted to wear heels, 
I have to truck through a river? <laughs> this is absolutely <laughs> happening. <laughs> oh my god! Right before Larry comes on stage. Right Do you know where your mom is? Do you see her? Yes! Yes! yes. Is that your mom? Your mom? My bag! Yeah. Oh shit! My bro. bag! Help! You're... Wait, I'm gonna fucking fall over. Happy birthday, Harry. Oh my god, what? What the <laughs> fuck, bro? We're swimming. We're swimming in this shit. Oh my god, I'm freezing. How did it get like this? I don't know, <laughs> Sarah. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Thank you so much. You need to go, girl. Nana Winwood is like less than 10 minutes away. Oh, thank you so much, man. Who is this? The mom. Oh, that's the mom. Oh, we love her. Holy sh- I'm about to take my shoes off. Thank God for Pam. Pam saved the day. We get into Pam's minivan. We're trying to get out of the parking lot. It took us an hour to just get out of the parking lot. Cop cars, there's fucking ambulances, there's like fire trucks and shit. It's a disaster. Yeah, we were Thank so you stressed. So what are all of your names again? I'm Betsy. Betsy Page. Betsy Page. Pam, Betsy, is there anything else you would like me to call you? No, that's fine. Is Pam, all right. No, it's literally, Pam. no, goddess. Yeah, no, literally. Goddess. Yeah, if God himself works. She saved us. God. No, I'm literally in a fucking sock. Oh, cold. The baby goes off stage in 15 minutes. Off? Okay, yeah. Off? I'm going to fucking be my pants. I say make a beeline over there and go do pretend you're doing something. Come Just back. run straight. Yes. Yeah. Go behind that tree. Should I? Yeah, it's a completely okay. red light. Fuck it. Run. Fuck it. What's her plan? <laughs> She's got a plan. Don't worry. Okay. Where'd she go? <laughs> It's so funny because I've been telling the same thing for the past 15 minutes. We've been in the yeah. same spot. She finally listened. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yup. Uh. Sarah, right here. <laughs> I feel so much better. Wow. Okay. Wow. Wow. Thank God. <laughs> So happy. I'm so happy. So then it takes us an hour to get out of the parking lot. But next we have to cross the bridge. By the time we crossed the bridge, it was another hour. Orlando when we got to the police. <laughs> <laughs> Caitlyn's like actually crying in the middle seat because she's so upset. Like obviously Caitlyn was talking too and like trying to make the mood lighter, but it was just so upsetting. We're now in this car for two hours when Shaq's party is five minutes away. It's two in the morning and Shaq's party ends at three. And we were thinking like, should we just get out of the car and walk? By the time we got to Shaq's party, all of our makeup would just be all over us. We would be a mess. By the time we make it to Shaq's, it was 2.50. And we were like, there's no point. Pam, can you just take us back to our place? That route was really chill. Like there was no traffic. Finally get back to our Airbnb and it's like 3.05. Of course the time is 3.05. Me and Caitlin walk into this Airbnb defeated. Damp, we didn't see Harry, we didn't see Pitbull, we didn't see Shaq, we didn't see the Kobe tribute. I'm cold and I'm sad and I'm miserable. And I was like, Caitlin, we're in Miami for like three more days. Let's at least try to make the best out of it. We're, we're going to a beach party tomorrow. He's a professional football player and he was throwing a beach party. We got free passes to that too. So I was like, Caitlin, we have Gronk's party tomorrow. Also, we can like go to some clubs and shit. Like we're in Miami, bitch. Caitlin was trying so hard to be optimistic and positive, but she was bummed and I get it. So was I, but you know, it's like, what can you do? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my fucking God. I literally cannot believe this. I literally can't believe this. Yeah, Mm-hmm. I'm so upset. I don't even know how to make the best of this right now because, because tonight was supposed to be the best. It's not like me 
Nikki and Caitlin were too late or, or too drunk. It was just we the got, weather. We came here for these three events and all, like, what are we going to do? And it's raining. Can't go to the beach. We don't know if Bronx is canceled tomorrow. Hey. Did you look at the weather? The sun <laughs> moved up earlier. <laughs> I'm right. trying to have Caitlyn think positively, but we'll see how that ends up. <laughs> I mean, I just threw up my favorite pair of heels. I'll work on it. We were robbed! Robbed! <laughs> we are good, wholesome people. <laughs> we don't bother anyone! The two interests that we <laughs> have. We both have, like, so passionately. Passionately. <laughs> and that shit was just... Taken. Someone pulled the motherfucking plug on that bitch. For both things! A fucking flood out of nowhere! Out of every night. Why tonight? If we could turn back time. So we both go to bed. We wake up the next morning at 11 and Gronk's beach party starts at 2. It's fucking gloomy outside and it's raining. There's not one ounce of sunshine anywhere near. Caitlin was still down to go to the beach party. She was like, I need to do something. And I'm like, I get it. Okay, I'm down to go to the beach party. Let's fucking do it. And then Caitlin goes on Instagram and goes to the Gronk beach party Instagram story. It was tragic to say the least. Gronk was like taking pictures in the rain with like thumbs up, being like, everyone come out to Gronk's beach party. He's like trying to keep it chill, but you know he's like crying inside because it's fucking raining at his beach party. At the taco truck, like ordering a taco, but the whole taco truck's under a tarp. Come out to Gronk's beach party, we have catering. And me and Caitlin are looking at the story and we're like, oh my God, no. The next slide is a bunch of like the hot girls, bottle service girlies. They were all in bikinis and they were all so hot and they were all huddled under tarps together like trying to keep each other warm and they're just like and like the caption was like come on out to Gronk's beach party it's still lit and me and Caitlin were like no everyone's under tarps I feel like if we would have gone we would have just left after five minutes I mean maybe it would have been fun like in the rain but like there was no one really there and like it was just not it was not the vibe it was just not the vibe so then that night we we're like okay we at least need to go out to a club there's this club called the 11 club that's the club that you go if you want to have like an amazing time in miami right i guess caitlin's friend had an in like he knew some people that could get us into the 11 club he was like so down to get us in like saying that it was going to be so easy so we get ready for the 11 club and we're like okay finally something fun before we're about to leave caitlin's like let me just call him and make sure that like he can still get us in just to be safe she calls him he's not answering she calls him like 20 more times he's not answering we don't want to get there and then like wait around like fools you know and then caitlin checks her dms and there was this girl and was like hey girl i know that there it was a shit show last night but i have a proposal for you if you want to have a good night tonight and caitlin's like Yes, bitch. Hi. And then the girl responded and was like, So I have this sugar daddy, and he invited me to the Rolling Stones party tonight. And he's like on this VIP list. You just have to use his name. I'll text you the name. Me and Caitlin were like, uh, yeah. We want to go to the Rolling Stones party. Are you kidding me? What time? 10. Perfect. We're there. Did we just redeem this whole weekend? I'm going to say down. Don't just respond and say down. You sound like such a douchebag. Down. <laughs> Hit me well, up. Well, I gotta get up and get ready. No, I know, but say yes. I'm so excited. <laughs> Let's do it. Oh my God, down. Yes, okay. <laughs> you just send down. <laughs> Period send. A Reba. A fucking Reba, bitch. I hope this isn't a scam. Literally don't have anything left in me. I can't go through that again. Yeah. Like I've been so upset all day for one reason or another. Like if I get disappointed one more time, I'm going home. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see where we end up. It's the Rolling Stones party, and it's Harry's birthday. Harry loves the Rolling Stones. What if Harry's at the Rolling Stones party? And we're dumbasses, and we thought that it was like the band, the Rolling Stones, that were performing at this party and not the fucking magazine. Hey y'all, I forgot to include this, but the girl called us again and she said that she wasn't able to go anymore, but she told us that we could still go if we wanted to, just use his name at the door. And we felt kind of weird because we were like using her sugar daddy's name and she wasn't even gonna go, but she said it was chill. 
pills, so yeah. And we're like, okay, so we have anxiety, obviously. We don't know this man. We don't know what he looks like. We get to the Rolling Stones party. There's the VIP guest list line, and we're like, okay, I'm sure that that's the line that we have to go into. I also forgot to mention this, but the sugar daddy's name was also really hard to pronounce, and it was super long. And so we called the girl right when we got there, and we were like, how do you pronounce his last name? As we were walking to the freaking line, we were just over and over again, like saying his name out loud, just so that we could memorize it and get it down so we didn't say it wrong at the door. We were so nervous. And we get up to the front and we were like, hi, we're with so-and-so, the sugar daddy. And then the girl like looks at the list and was like, oh shit. And like gives us these special wristbands. Didn't ask any questions. Just saw that we were with him. He's, I guess, a huge deal. And we are in the Rolling Stones party. And it's lit. And we just look at each other, we're like, This is awesome and I can't believe like Harry might be here. So I was just like on lockdown in my mind like scanning the party for Harry. These two dudes come up to us and they were telling us that they're going to the Super Bowl and they have like a box. I just hit a lick in the box. How to put a stick in the box. One of those VIP boxes at the Super Bowl. And me and Caitlin look at each other and we're like <laughs> and we were like, you guys have Super Bowl tickets? We don't. Where? Do you think you guys could like get us in? Ha ha ha, just kidding. We're kidding. And they were just like, ha ha, maybe, who knows? Hey, you never know. And then we were like, so like, what? You're not being clear. And then they asked for our numbers so that we can hit them up tomorrow and see if we can go to the Super Bowl with them. So Caitlin gave them her number. We were just kind of hanging out with them for the rest of the night. Cause they were really cool. They were really, really cool guys. They weren't being creepy. But I also think that they thought that we were gonna like hook up with them. I don't know what they thought. They weren't trying anything, you know? They weren't like, you guys are beautiful, you know? They were just like funny, lovely dudes. It's so annoying that like, we don't know if guys think that they're expecting sex or if it's just like an actual chill friendship going on. Like we just couldn't tell, but we were like, you're the only friends that we've met at this party, so we're just gonna hang out with you, whatever. Paris Hilton randomly comes on stage. <laughs> We didn't know that she was a DJ. I had no idea that Paris Hilton was a DJ. I, fucking I, didn't know it. Was a DJ. I mean, good for her. Like, I'm glad that she found a new passion, but it just was so funny. <laughs> I thought that she was gonna actually be like remixing shit and like mixing shit. I thought she was like an actual fucking DJ. But this bitch was just clicking buttons. She was just clicking buttons. She would just click a button, play a song, and then just like vibe out. And then take out her phone and like record her. And then like record the crowd. Just go back to her. Just like vibing. So funny. I could not stop laughing. I love the bitch. I watched Simple Life. She paved the way for everyone. But watching her on stage as a DJ, just clicking buttons and just vibing. With like her little like cheeky smile. This bitch was in her own little world. Didn't give a fuck. It was honestly amazing. It was so funny. And then I was like, I'm about to see Mick Jagger in the flesh, like whipping that shit around, throwing it back. My dumb ass. So I'm like talking to the two dudes that we were with. And I was like, so guys, like when is the Rolling Stones coming out? Like when are they performing? And then the two guys were like, <laughs> That's funny. And I was like, no, what? Like, I'm serious. It's the fucking Rolling Stones party. And then they were like, this is the Rolling Stones party, like the magazine, like, you know? And I was like, what? I was so upset. I really thought it was the Rolling Stones headlining and then like all these little DJs were, I don't know. I don't know. So Harry's definitely not here. <laughs> 
<laughs> Harry's, I don't even know where the fuck Harry is, but he is not here. He was in LA celebrating his birthday. I found that out later, but whatever. Um, after Paris Hilton set, Caitlyn's friend that was at the 11 Club finally texted her back and was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I like put my phone down. I'm having a blast at the 11 Club. <laughs> I'm with all these celebrities, but come through. Like I can get you guys in. And me and Caitlin were like, great, cool. And we leave this party. We Uber to the 11 Club. We get there. Caitlin calls her friend. He's not answering. She calls him again, not answering. Calls him 20 more times, not answering. She's freaking out. I go up to one of the people in line, like at the front of the line, and I was like, how long did you guys wait? And they were like, three and a half hours. And we were like, fuck that. So we wait around for like 20 minutes trying to call her friend. Caitlin's like about to cry. And also the Rolling Stones party was like over at this point. And then these two guys come up to us. They just got out of the 11 club and they seemed really chill. I was mostly talking to them because she was trying to call her friend. And he was like, we think that we kind of want to go to a strip club if you guys want to come. Me and Caitlin were like, fuck it. Let's go to a strip club. I thrive at strip clubs. I love throwing ones on naked girls. And the girls are so nice. I really vibe with the strippers. And Caitlin's never gone to a strip club before. And I'm like, girl, it'll be fun. We Uber to this strip club. And Caitlin's still kind of like, I wish my friend answered. Like, this sucks. So we get there. And we meet up with the guys at the front. And they pay for us. Again, we don't know their intentions. <laughs> and we walk into this strip club. And it's Liddy. It is so big. All these cool lights and colors like I'm like fuck yeah let's fucking go all the girls are so hot it was like all sizes all shapes all colors and it was amazing so then I go to the ATM I get me and Caitlin some dollar bills and then we go and sit at the stage I'm having the time of my life I am dancing because they're playing good music I'm vibing Caitlin is sitting next to me trying to get into it I was like giving her some dollar bills and I'm like you just throw it at them just throw it at their ass Stick it in their underwear, you know? Put it between their titties. Just like throw it at them. And she was trying, you know? And I respect her for like trying. We really want to go to the 11 Club. And we're at a strip club now. Then this one stripper comes on stage and she's right in front of me. I'm like throwing money at her and shit. And she gets on her knees and comes up to me. And she was like, Sarah, I know who you are. I watch your videos and I fucking love you. And then she like pulls back and she's like, I fucking love you. I was like, what? I was freaking out. I was so happy. I was like, bitch. And I was like, fuck yeah. And she kept like shoving her titties in my face. And I was like, ah. Oh my God, it was so funny. I love the bitch. All the guys were so mad at me, glaring at me because I was getting all the attention. It was amazing. Then the girl gets off the stage and she comes up to me and she's just fucking naked. I just, I'm just talking to a fan and my fan's naked right in front of me. She was like, let me buy you a shot. And I was like, hey, that's cool with me. She goes and gets me a shot and she gets herself a shot. I'm just throwing a shot back with my, with my stripper subscriber. And it was iconic. And I was like, Caitlin, let me go get you a drink. Just let me get you a drink. And apparently there was a guy across from us. And I guess he was like eyeing Caitlin, like looking at her being like, and I guess while I was at the bar, I'm sorry, my camera died. I'm on my phone now. That guy, let's call him Larry. He looked like such a Larry. He was like an old fart. And I guess he like sent his friend, Bob, over around the stage to come up to Caitlyn and be like, hey, like my friend over there thinks you're cute. Like he was wondering if you guys want to go sit over there with us. And Caitlyn was like, no thanks, I'm good. And then the guy was like, come on, you guys are having so much fun. Like you guys seem like a really fun time. Come over there and sit with us. She was like, I said no thanks. And he was like, whoa, whoa, okay. And he like walks back to his friend. So that put her in like a really weird headspace. And then she texts me and she was like, I'm being harassed. And I was like, Ugh. and I'm at the bar getting her a drink. I sign the bill and I get her drink and I go back to her. And I was like, what the fuck? You're being harassed? What the why? And she was like, those guys from across the way are like staring at me, trying to get us to come over there. And I look over there and they're just like, come on, we got two seats for you. And I was like, fuck off. 
No. And then Caitlin was like, I need to leave. I need to get out of here. And I was like, oh my God, what? Like, are you okay? And she was like, I'm getting really anxious. And I was like, fuck. Cause I was having so much fun. And she was like, Sarah, you can stay. I know that you're having a blast, but I just like, I'm so anxious right now. Like, I just need to go home. Just Uber when you're done. I was like, I am not gonna just, you know, I'm not gonna stay here alone. I'm coming with you. And she was like, you don't have to, you don't have to. And then she started crying. And I was like, oh my God, it's okay. I don't care that much, you know? Like that was fun, but like, I'm not, you know, I don't really give a fuck that I leave. So we left and we go in the Uber. She's just apologizing to me. And it was really sad. Like I totally understand. Like anxiety can come at you at the most random places. Like I was not upset that we left. Like I totally get it. And strip clubs are very overwhelming, especially if it's your first time. You know, it is. We get back to the Airbnb and I'm kind of like making her laugh and we're kind of like joking around again. So the vibes are good, you know? So we were like kind of going over the night and how it was funny. Then we just go to bed. And then the next day is Super Bowl Sunday and we also had no plans. <laughs> Caitlin hit up the guy from the party last night to see if we can go to the Super Bowl. He didn't respond to us. So we were just like, all right, that was kind of a stretch. We were just planning on going to some sports bar and watching it. I was gonna say sports bra, but then I remembered our friend Amanda lives in Miami. We hit her up and we're like, hey girl, what are you doing for the Super Bowl? She was like, oh my God, I'm at my boyfriend's house. Like come over, his parents are like throwing a Super Bowl party, like come through. And we're like, fuck yeah. Is it like a casual party? Is it like a dress up party? Like, should we look nice? Amanda was like, no, 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 it's okay. Like I'm not even wearing makeup, it's casual. And me and Caitlin are like, okay, lit. We just put on our Pitbull shirts cause we were still mourning that performance. We show up to Amanda's boyfriend's house just looking like that because Amanda said it was cash. <laughs> Where are we? Dude, you look ridiculous up next to this door. <laughs> And there's so many nice cars. And we're like, oh my God, who is here? Amanda greets us out in the front. Yeah. Oh, this is not even a real <laughs> pathway. <laughs> oh my God. Literally. And we go inside and everyone in that fucking party looks so hot. Every girl is wearing like a beautiful tight dress. All the guys were in such nice outfits. It was so classy. And me and Caitlin walk in, in our fucking pitbull shirts. We were so out of place. We were like, Amanda, you should have told us we can do better than this. And Amanda was like, oh my God, it's so fine. These are all my boyfriend's dad's friends and like whatever. But they all looked like they were in their late twenties, early thirties. No one would really talk to us because we just looked like peasants. There was a whole bar with like bartenders and like naked girls walking around that had their bodies painted. It looked like they were wearing clothes. One girl was wearing like a whole chief's uniform painted on and then other girls were wearing like the 49ers painted on them and they were like walking around with drinks and shit and we're like where are we right now? And everyone was in the living room watching the Super Bowl. So it was kind of crowded. They were just watching it on one TV. There were some people in the front of the living room watching the Super Bowl, but everyone was just kind of like talking to each other. And me and Caitlin really wanted to watch the game. We actually really like football. Caitlin's from Boston. So she loves the Patriots. She's been watching football her whole life. My dad played for the Denver Broncos. So like I was trained to like football. Me and Caitlin were just kind of like standing around in the living room, like drinking our beer. And we were like, oh my God, we can't even, we don't even know what's going on. Like we can't even hear or like see. And then Amanda comes up to us and was like, do you guys want to go in the home theater? And we were like, home theater? Yeah. And so Amanda like walks us over to this beautiful home theater. Instead of recliner chairs, they were like big sofas. And so me and Caitlin like sit down on this comfy ass sofa, legs stretched out, sipping our brewskis. We brought like 12 beers in. The screen was so big. It was like a literal movie theater. And we were like, yes, this is exactly where we need to be for the Super Bowl. Like Amanda and her boyfriend come in and they're sitting on the sofa behind us. And then Amanda's boyfriend's friends started coming in and everyone started to realize the home theater was where you had to be if you wanted to watch the game. So it started to fill up, but everyone was so invested in the game. Everyone was rooting for the same team. So like the vibes were good. There was no tension, you know? And it was just so fun. It was such a a lovely night and then the fucking halftime show came on and it was Shakira and JLo and that was so overwhelming like everyone was popping off and freaking out oh my god
my god. Oh my oh. god. That performance was just so beautiful, so powerful, amazing night! Didn't vlog anything at the Super Bowl party, but here's us leaving it. And here's the view, like, here's bruh. Here's the home that we randomly ended up at. <laughs> <laughs> in our pimple shirts getting harassed all night. We the sugar in, daddies, like, the NFL sugar. players, oh. in suits. and we fucked up. And we fucked up. Just like, show them look, this. look at even us walking this out of here. The, How do we even get out of this, this gate? This is the fucking front gate, dude. I literally don't even know. There has know. to be a button. Oh, hidden in the bushes. What do I push? Here's all the super nice cars under the super nice palm trees. In front of the fucking yacht. All right, wow. where's our lift? The next day, that was like our hangover day. So we chilled and then Tuesday we went home. And yeah, all in all, the Miami experience also had its ups and downs. Just like Cancun, you never knew what was gonna happen. I'm so happy that I got to experience that with Caitlyn. At some points I kind of had to like, you know, drag her out of the sadness. But the sadness was so valid and I was sad too, but I'm like, if I'm not gonna be the optimist, like we're both just gonna sink. It was kind of a failure, but hey, it made for a good story and we're gonna remember that forever. That's pretty much it. I don't know what else to say. We got refunded. We got refunded for our Harry Pepsi shit show. But since we were sponsored by Shaquille O'Neal's party, obviously didn't get refunded for that because we didn't pay for that. Thank God we didn't pay for that. Oh my God. And that was like $2,000. Thanks so much for watching. You guys are the reason why I get to do all this cool shit and make these videos for you. So thank you so much for watching. It means a lot. Yeah, I'll see you next video. Woo! I'm in Miami, baby.